Hey guys, in this video I'll try to develop my own onset detection method. By the way, this video is also just the beginning of a huge series in which I will explain the basics of signal processing and more. So if you're into these things, then hit that subscribe button. So what is this mysterious onset? Google says that it's the beginning of something, especially something unpleasant. I wouldn't say that about the sound, but Google is partially right. In signal processing, onset is the part of audio signal where the new note begins. In case of the guitar, this is usually just after the pick hits the string. Take a look at the slow motion video. Just after the pick hits the string, the string's amplitude rises to its maximum level, slowly decreases and stabilizes for a while. And then at the end of the note, the amplitude drops drastically, only to become silent. These four stages of note's life are called A for attack, D for decay, S for sustain and R for release, as an ADSR model commonly used by envelope generators. And I will probably make a video about them one day. Okay, but what's all this for? Well, attack is the beginning of the note, so that's the onset. Our goal is to distinguish attack and release, to crop out only the part with the note out of the signal. This is extremely important. If two notes are included in the same frame of signal, the accuracy of the subsequent measurements, like detection of frequency, may decrease. And that is something that must be prevented at all costs. Let's take a look at the guitar signal in time domain. What you see here is a time domain plot of a very fast guitar solo. These are rather high pitched notes. Take a listen. And now if we take a look at the very first note, it's quite easy to spot the attack Decay is just after the first amplitude decrease. Sustain is where the amplitude remains the same for quite a while and release with a huge drop. The notes are separated by silence, which is very typical for techniques involving the peak, like staccato. Let's focus on the attack. This part of the note is characterized by a rapid change of amplitude from the lowest point at almost zero to its maximum level. So the ratio between this high point and this low one will give us an idea about how fast the amplitude changes. If the ratio is a large number and the low point is located before the high one, then it's definitely an attack. In other case, it's most likely a release, like on the left side of the screen. But if we'll take just any of the low points, then there's no way of identifying any of the ADSR stages. To overcome this problem, I need to introduce the envelope. Well, envelope's definition is quite undefined, but in my understanding, it's a line that goes just over the amplitude of the signal. Let me show you. This orange and green line is the envelope. And how did I make it? All I did was to calculate the signal's oscillation with the enhanced autocorrelation and then find the maximum amplitude of the portion of the signal corresponding to its oscillation length. Now that we have the envelope, calculating the high to low point ratio is just a matter of YouTube magic. Here we have it. This middle plot is the ratio between the highest and the lowest amplitude of the frame. Below that is this ratio divided into attack and release. So if the low point is located in front of the high one, then the ratio falls into the attack vector. If not, then it's the release vector. I didn't tell you one thing. A frame of signal is exactly 2048 samples. And with a sampling frequency of 44.1 kHz, that's just about 46 milliseconds. The following frames are overlapped by 256 samples, or just about 6 milliseconds. So all the computation must fit into these 6 milliseconds. 
As you see, my onset detection algorithm is rather focused on time domain of the signal, and this is quite unique. All the algorithms I have come across so far take the advantage of frequency spectrum analysis, but my goal is to find when a string is being hit, like in staccato technique. Frequency spectrum-based methods are great to tell that the tone has changed in legato technique, where there's no silence between the consecutive notes. I think I will add legato detection later, so subscribe if you want to learn about it. But for now, let's just do this string hit thing. Anyway, there's one problem with these plots. Do you see it? Attack is often late. Take a look at the second note. The attack raises only at almost half of a note. It's obviously late. And this same thing happens here at the second to last one. But let me fix it. <sighs> okay, now that's better. Up until this point, I knew everything what to do. I had it all sorted out and planned. But now I know what I want to achieve, but I don't really know how. So I think I'm going to spend the rest of this evening sorting out how to get the information uh, about the string hit. Because all I need from this function, from this onset function, is one information. Is it attack in this frame or is it, well, just something else? Is it release? And uh, I don't have it yet, so just wait until tomorrow. It will be a second for you. It's day two and I made it. It took me all the evening, but the progress is real. Okay, this last plot is the real deal. It's a combination of envelope ratio and signal power measurement. And with a few tweaks and a few very ugly if blocks, that's what we get. So this plot only takes four values, minus one for release, one for silence, zero for decay or sustain, and two for the attack. Now I'll just delete these other three plots to get a better look at the ADSR, and then I'll show you a few very different sound examples. I have to tell you, this algorithm completely exceeded my expectations. I didn't think it would behave half as good as it does right now. So it works fine with the pre-recorded guitar samples, but the real life test is plugging this into the computer and try to fit um, my algorithm with real guitar data. So let's do this.
thing, this works fine. And I'm very happy with these results. I had some problems with Linux and this, this right now runs on Windows. I was really upset just yesterday's evening and I didn't have a chance to finish this whole recording just because it wouldn't work out on Linux. I don't know why. There is one error that I don't really know what means. Input overflow. I think that somehow this input overflow lowers the quality of this real-time recording. What do you think? How, how do you like this whole project, this whole idea about detecting single notes? I know this didn't de detect all 100% of single notes, but I, I think it did about 80, which is still very cool. And almost always when it detected a note, the note really was there. So I think it works fine. And I'll just move on to another project. So subscribe, comment, give me your feedback on what you think about this project and wait until the next one.